tortured artist trope? If you look that up in the dictionary, my face would be next to it. <laughs> Guys, we've made a split second decision because I can't stop crying. So I'm gonna be depressed ghetto and I'm gonna change this wig around. And um, I'm gonna go in black pants and a white shirt. And if I'm in that outfit, then it's just canon. That's, that's literally what we've decided. <laughs> Bless Will for editing these so I can just sit down and do the intros. Thank you, Will. I'm back to thanking Will because he is the reason these videos have gotten finished. <laughs> you know what they say, nothing like a good breakdown to start off the first day of getting into cosplay. <laughs> Friday was definitely a little more of a rough day for me, guys, and that's fine. Sometimes it happens. And if you know, you know. I'm gonna talk about this more at the end. But <laughs> the first four days of Expo was just very rough for me. I am definitely someone, if I'm taken out of my comfort zone, it takes me a day or two to adjust. And then I was in a lot of explicit, like, a lot of pain physically. So I was just like, oh god, there's gonna be some rough days for me. And that's fine. It happens. When I'm out of my comfort zone, I can't... I really just plan for the worst at this point, and if the worst doesn't happen, that's good on my book. That's a win. <laughs> Everything going on, it's a lot. So, but each con, it kind of gets easier, and each one, we and Sparkles are kind of learning how to better navigate it so it's more comfortable for us moving forward, because there are some things that, are ha that have happened that we can't reverse time with. So it's like we have to just figure out a new way of doing things because of it. And like, I think at this point, after like, four to five cons now it's we have a good solid plan for when things happen or like we have to make adjustments and all that stuff and it's something that like it's very important to do when you're dealing with like either health problems or like mental issues when i deal with both so it's <laughs> one hell of a time here but i hope you guys enjoy the next two days of expo it was fun i did have fun i swear to god i was having fun I was just also miserable. Two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm a lizard. No lizard, come back. There he goes. The scary part of what I'm about to do is have to pull this wig out of a bag that I have to wear tomorrow and make it as clean as possible because I kind of, last time I wore it, um, I, I may have bitch cried a lot when I was in it. So uh, I kind of, when we were getting out of it, just pulled it off my head and then did no work on it. So we're going to fix this thing up and I'm terrified to pull this out of the bag and see how it looks. Wish me luck, guys. Okay, we're gonna do this together for emotional support. It's not, it's not, it's flat, like super flat. Oh no. I didn't wash the glue out of the lace because I'm a dumb dumb. Okay. He's not looking so bad. He's not actually, this is a lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be. It's just, this, this was already messed up when I put it on the last time because I didn't do what I'm about to do, which is go through with the steamer, but I don't know if I want to recomb this back into place because I like the, I like it to be like really smooth. Ugh. Oop. Okay. Also, it's gonna be 100 degrees tomorrow and I'm in my most layered cosplay. I'm glad we'll be inside. So what needs to happen to this wig right now is step one is get the glue out. Step two is I'm gonna redo the bun, because one, it's crooked. I, I may have put it on lopsided a little bit. Fix this. I have to unknot this part and the sides. I'm glad I'm doing this now and not tomorrow. I'm not supposed to go to the convention today until six. So we have six -ish hours to do this, which I did this wig in five hours. So fixing it shouldn't be hard, I say now. Oh, ghetto, I love you so, but your hair and the different hair lengths because i'm gonna be super picky about this when i i would do more of his cosplays and i'm gonna end up with like four ghetto wigs and i know it i can foresee it i foresee my future and it's gonna be filled with ghetto wigs oh god so much hairstyling this is the third time today but saraya wouldn't let me pick him up no hello lizard i'm back so 
I'm in charge. It's not pokey looking. You just grab it by the back of the neck. No. Aww. All right, we're off to the con. Sparks for a second time. I gotta practice with these shoes actually. They're my ghetto shoes. I want to go in that pool so badly. This is outfits. I'm in all, I'm in leather pants. We wear in, we wear in fits. Taylor, Taylor. I'm gonna snap this. You made this. Yeah. You made this. I watched you make it in like a week. Like, I love days, actually. Psychopath. <laughs> I love how psychotic you are. Because <laughs> I want to, at the end of the year, I want to make one of those like books, like the photo books of like all the times you went to. Uh, it's me three hours ago, like, bawling my eyes out, and then us standing here and being like, okay, we're gonna make the most out of this, and I'm gonna get into ghetto, and we're gonna make as many TikToks as possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to our lives. <laughs> this weekend has been... <laughs> like, here's the thing. It's like a weird roller coaster that we've been on so far. It's day, it's, technically, one. It's, it's Friday. It's just severely... It's like this would happen to us. Yeah. Oh God, us telling our mutuals be like, yeah, we had to leave our Airbnb and go to a, go to one of our friends' apartments. I sleep here. And Axel. And the table. My head every two hours. Yeah, I'm sorry, cause Ashley. So Ashley has to sleep here. So Ashley sleeps here. We're sleeping on this couch. This couch doesn't go all the way out. That's a table right there, that I just put my legs on and a blanket there. You know, I also don't have a pillow. We are like. It's like I'm camping. <laughs> I'm okay. I just, you know, it's been stressful and my brain is broken. So this happens. I think be at this point. It is what it is. <laughs> we did a little thing where us collectively, we didn't even post about it. We kind of were just like, we should just do this. So like the first people to come up to us and like recognize us and like know who we are, we're giving a signed Spike's family book too. Cause we thought it'd be nice. Just like a thank you. For tolerating us. <laughs> Y'all are putting up with a lot of bullshit, so you know what? We decided, like, we gotta give back. They, they suffer a lot. They suffer us. so much from between my content and my brain. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do little fun things like this. I think yeah. it, it would be cute, but we're gonna sign it and then give it to, we have to tra track them down. We do know who they are, funny yeah. enough, um, but they were so sweet. Now we have to get into getting Gojo. I have to finish the wig. We used a bronzer. Gojo's gonna be Bronzy. Bronzy today. I'll be back when I look not distressed. <laughs> Guys, we've made a split second decision because I can't stop crying. So I'm gonna be depressed ghetto and I'm gonna change this wig around. And um, I'm gonna go in black pants and a white shirt. And if I'm in that outfit, then it's just canon. That's, that's literally what we've decided. <laughs> At least I'm laughing. <laughs> it's better than crying, which is what I was doing five minutes ago. But guys, if you want like waterproof eyeliner, NYX Epic Wear. It is tested by me to last a full breakdown. So, <laughs> tested several times actually. <laughs> Yeah.
ghetto look, it's me. Okay, you're so self-centered that you got a billboard. A little, yes! A little poster. Where's mine? I'm gonna have to go complain. Like, is it a phone? Like, uh, why do you get one? You get a whole thing. Just because I'm rich. You pay, yeah, you pay. <laughs> Are we watching lizard mating? How does lizards mate? Oh my god, wait. Oh my god. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> Are these lizards f***ing? I think they're f***ing. Oh my god, they are f***ing. These lizards have more sex than we do. I hate <laughs> so much. Lizard count two plus, maybe? Ta-da! <laughs> Five times today I have cried and I just want to say uh, Nick's epic eyeliner stays on through at least three of those crying sessions. It looks clean here in person. Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> oh, all you mentally ill motherfuckers out there. Nick's eyeliner. <laughs> I use it too. This, this is the last thing to come off my face when I'm taking my makeup off. Like it doesn't The white come never off. comes off. So if you see me with white, it's part tomorrow, tomorrow. Mind your business. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> I'm just sticking it in. Fucking hot. It's so hot. You know, you know, you know. Breakdowns happen. It's fine. <laughs> if, if you've been around for like the last year, you, you do know what happened. But if you're not aware of what has happened or what has gone on, I will say it one more time. Um, mainly because I do want to talk about Aki. So last year, uh, literally in September, a year ago, in like four, six days, he unfortunately passed away and we were dating. And I was so uncontrollably in love with him. Um, I, a month ago now, put out a series called Life Beyond Fear. And it's on TikTok, and it will be eventually on YouTube. Uh, I just have to, I've decided to make an extended cut of it. So there is the, if you guys would like to see it and like to hear me talk about further in depth my relationship with Aki. Uh, on Instagram and TikTok, there is a series called Life, uh, Life Beyond Fear, and it talks about my relationship with him. And I just love talking about him even if sometimes I start crying because like that serotonin that he gave me is still there when I get to speak about him and now that he's not here anymore it's like I get to have those moments again where it's like I get to be that level of happy of like being with the serotonin through the roof I never experienced anything like it before so losing that has been so difficult for me over the last year and having to come to terms with the fact that he's not here with us anymore. It's incredible. He was one of the smartest, most talented people I had ever met in my lifetime and I've met an aggressive amount of people in my 27 years of life. So meeting someone so incredible and so gung-ho about going after life to tragically have him no longer here with us, it just breaks me because like, he should be here with us, not just as my boyfriend or my lover or any of that stuff. I wanted him to be here with us, creating and happy and going after life like he had planned to because that boy had everything written down, everything planned. He had a schedule. He knew exactly where he was going and he wanted to go at it with all of his might. And I love that about him. And so now, after a year, I have definitely sat down with myself and thought about everything and I spent a lot of time thinking through everything we had talked about, our relationship, where I stood, where I wanted to go, and what I was going to do. And like, I had to make a really tough decision in the beginning of it and then even tougher decisions 
moving forward because it was like I didn't know what to do I lost the person that I had planned to be with for a while hopefully forever that was that was my hope that I would be with him forever but unfortunately that's not how life turned out and it's horrifyingly tragic to me and sad and that's like the hardest part about it is I do feel aggressively lonely at times because I lost someone who was my best friend. I, I am no longer scared to show you guys that side of me that it is a very rough behind the scenes for me, but I'm still trying because I think, especially for the people that have been around for a while, it's very important for you guys to see that I am still actively trying even if it is painful for me because my job is this my job is to be public facing with all of you guys and to be editing and creating and all that stuff and when you go through something that tragic and basically have to tell everyone and it's not just like we're telling 10 of our friends there was like thousands of people that had to see me go through the worst thing that i could ever imagine Especially after going to Anime When I See last year and Katsu Khan, I definitely recognized, and especially I think Expo was when I came to the decision of I need to sit down and have a conversation with everyone and just more open up about what has gone on behind the scenes. And it did feel a lot more freeing to sit down and have a conversation and make something very beautiful in Aki's honor because to me he was an extremely beautiful person that I loved endlessly so now that he's not here anymore I feel it is part of my responsibility to still keep him here with us so there's different ways that I do that which is one of them is I put together a ghetto cosplay that is fully dedicated to him because he was my ghetto I wanted to make sure that it was the way that he would have wanted it and that he would have loved and would have been so happy to see me in and I get to have these types of things that even if not everyone realizes it or knows to me it's very special this little stuffed animal that I carry around and you guys will see photos of all the time and if you see me at con sometimes I'm playing with this thing Aki gave this to me when he came back from his business trip he got it in Japan and I call him little friend if you go on my Instagram there's a little thing where we take him around everywhere to other people it's just a little stuffed animal it's like to me this represents Aki and his love for me if I have him with us and I just have him around it feels like Aki gets to just like still be here with us in my mind <laughs> and that makes me happy because I want him to still be here with us even if he can't be himself so I feel like it's part of my responsibility as his boyfriend to do that but it's just like for me I've had to come to terms with a lot of stuff. I'd been just so miserable for the last year and I was just so sad and destroyed about it. But like every time I went to a convention, it's like things got better and I got to see a lot of people and I felt really cared for and loved, really helped. And like the feeling like I was safe around a lot of people, like I got to meet a lot of people that in turn have been like really nice safety nets for me. And I could just like forget for a little bit. And that's like, that's really nice. We lost someone that was supposed to be such a mind-blowing creator in my mind. Like, when I looked at him and looked at the way that he processed things and made things, I was like, in a few years, you could be just insane. And I wanted to see that, and I wanted to help him create that so badly. Like, whatever it was in his head, I wanted to help him do, because I, I saw the beauty in what he did, and how much he loved it, and the passion behind what he had for it. And that, to me, as someone who has that type of passion and level of care and love for this, it spoke to me on such a different level, because <laughs> it's really hard to find people that are just as insane about this as me. And I just, I don't expect anyone to be as, like, crazy about this and, like, want to be doing this as much as I do. I never have that expectation for people. My own insanity towards this is just my, my own and my own alone. <laughs> I just like to make stuff that I think is funny or cool or, like, visually pleasing. It's literally just the things that I see in my head is what you guys get to witness when I make content. I don't like to call it content. I like to make, I like to call it art. So in my mind, if I can think about it like art, I will respect it way more than if I like think about it like content. And it also feels easier for me to create if I think about it like art, like I'm doing this because I'm making art instead of like, ugh, I gotta go make content today. It's like, nah, I get to make my little things that I want and come to life in my head regardless of what it is. 
And that to me is like very exciting and a very exciting part about doing this and why I have so much like passion and love for it. And also like passion and love for the people in this community and this community in general, because I know what we could say about this, the cosplay community. I know I've been in this cosplay community for nine years, going on 10 years soon. I know the shit show that is the cosplay community, but I know for certain that it's not everyone. Aki fostered that type of creativity with me. He fostered everything about me that was good. He praised it and loved it. So when I sat down and made the decision of like, what do I want to do? What do I want to showcase to this world? Because I am currently only showing you guys that I'm fucking depressed and it's I'm destroyed by this. So when I sat down and made the decision of like, how I'm gonna do this and move forward of like, I'm just going to be direct and forward with you guys about what's happening. And I think that's the best policy at the end of the day. I think it's important for you guys to one, see me trying even if I'm in pain, because hopefully if anyone else went through any, and I hope to God not, <laughs> I really hope no one has gone through what I have gone through. I pray for that because what I have gone through, it takes so much endurance and it is so painful. So I pray that no one's gone through what I've gone through, but I know this world is cruel. So if anyone has gone through something similar to me and that looks at me and says, Axel's fucked, but he's still trying. He's still making it work, even though it's so horrible and a tragedy what has happened and like my life has been horrific for me and i can admit that i can admit that openly that my life has been aggressively difficult and in my eyes that's okay because you know what this is my life i only get this one one life to live if these are the cards that the gods have chosen to give me then i'm gonna make it work for me and a part of me is just like yeah this is what i'm meant to be doing I want to be here making stuff, making stories, and being with the people that I love. And a part of me, instead of being able to showcase that like endless care and love to Aki, I am now putting that energy into giving that to you guys and the people around me and caring for them and loving them like they like I feel like they deserve it. I will be releasing the three-part series that I did on Aki that is on Instagram and TikTok, Life Beyond Fear, and it talks about my relationship with Aki and how he helped me see beyond a lot of the fear that I had in life and how much he meant to me and like where I where I'm at basically. <laughs> it's like a more in-depth look of where I'm at mentally which I think is good for if you guys are a part of my community to know because I do want you guys to just be aware of it and just to maybe understand where I'm coming from because like I think when you look at my art it's like you can tell that there is a deeper meaning behind some of it but th th I don't talk about it so I do want to start talking about like more of my my deeper meanings behind what I do because I tend to do things with purpose I like to put purpose behind what I'm cosplaying so tortured artist trope if you look that up in the dictionary, my face would be next to it. <laughs> but these are the cards that the gods have given me, so I'm going to be dealing with them. <laughs> and that's fine with me. I I think I've just very much accepted the turn of events that have happened, and I don't want it to stop me from being happy, because at the end of the day, Aki just wanted me to be happy. He wanted me to go after life and to not be afraid of things. And he wanted me to be loved and cared for. So it, those are things that I think about every day that like, regardless of what has happened, it's like, I get to still love him. I just can't be in love with him anymore, which does suck because he was an amazing person and he was an amazing person in my life. But sometimes good things don't last forever and that's okay. And that's really sad coming out of my mouth, actually. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's true sometimes. And we kind of just have to roll with the punches with things. And that's basically what me and Sparks have to do moving forward. So, like, I'm not going to hide any of this stuff from you guys of, like, when I am crying or sad. Because I think it's important for you guys to see that, like, even though I get into these states, we figure out a way around them. I hope you guys enjoyed the Expo vlog, even though it was filled with time crying <laughs> that's why we did depressed ghetto it's canon if i'm in depressed ghetto and crying <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see the third part i promise the last part of this video is way more happy than the la these these first two videos but i digress 
this happens sometimes and we are rolling with the punches and that's okay so if you guys want to see more of my crazy life don't forget to subscribe and you can also follow us on instagram tiktok and twitter there's also threads that we joke about i do sometimes post on threads actually <laughs> if you guys want to stay up to date with what we're doing definitely check us out up there um links are all in the description below and because of Will, thank you again, Will. The last part of the Expo vlog will be out next week. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and seeing into my life. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!